Hi. So I wanted just to go off of what she was talking about. Two words that feel really good. Momentum. And I love the analogy that you talk about the train going so fast in one direction. And it's really rough on the contents of the train if you want to stop and go in the opposite direction. And so for me, it helps to think, well, I don't need to stop it. And when it's going really fast, I just need to wait till it gets to the next stop and get or on a different train. hop a different train. <laughs> hop a different train. <laughs> that feels so good. And let's take this analogy sure. further since you so wisely brought it up right now. So... You heard the analogy that she's repeated that we've offered. If you're going 100 miles that way on a train and you want to go 100 miles an hour that way, you don't want it to suddenly stop and go the other way because it would be really hard on the contents of the train. That's been our analogy for years, wanting you to know, just let it slow down. Yeah. But now what we're saying is, let's call the train a condition. The train is a condition that's going one way or the other at some speed. But your vibration... On the train, the train could be going 100 miles an hour to some place you don't really want to go. And you could be vibrationally going someplace you do want to go. And under those conditions, you could, in the scheme of this silly analogy, hop onto a different train. I love that. That's so good. Yeah. I really got that. The condition does not need to control your vibration. Yeah. And if you will decide that the condition is not going to control your vibration, then you are a master, then you are free, and then you are always striving under all conditions. And people are amazed at how life is going for you when the current in a larger setting or a larger scope seems to be working against you. Nothing that is happening needs to affect your vibration and therefore needs to affect what is happening to you. So good. And one thing, my focus for myself, I've been getting a lot of inspiration to really be conscious about the people pleaser really hits home with me. And so just really... Let's stop just for a moment. And let's sure. talk about what that is. The desire to please others has some different components because wanting others to feel good, that's a wonderful thing. There's nothing out of whack with you liking it when others feel good and desiring that they feel good. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you believe that... You must be their path of least resistance. And that it's your job to get them feeling good. You can't buck the current of where they are. And it almost always backfires. Teach by your example. Don't try to change their conditions. And usually only those who have the wherewithal to change the condition of someone else. Like if you have enough money to bail them out of debt. Or if you have the money to buy them a new car when they've wrecked their old car. Only those who try to bail others out really come to the personal knowing that it never works, ever. You know it, don't you? Because unless they change their vibration, their experience isn't going to change. And you changing their condition only teaches them to be more conditional. And so it's been really good for me just to be conscious about, am I feeling obligated to go here or is it my highest excitement? Is it something that feels good to me? And really tuning into that and understanding that it's... Sorting that out takes a little time sometimes. So let's say that you're asking yourself that question. Am I going out of passionate desire or am I going out of obligation? Well, in either case, passionate desire is going to turn to whatever it's going to turn to. And obligation is going to turn to whatever it turns to. And sometimes it has to turn to it before you know if it was desire or obligation. You follow that? So what's wrong with doing the homework? What's wrong with having the experience? What's wrong with after the fact saying to yourself, Esther just had this identical experience. She hired a really nice person to help her in her Utah house. Really, really nice person. He asked her and she, at the moment that he asked her, was feeling overwhelmed with things that needed to be tended to because she was getting ready to leave the city and there were lots of loose ends. And as it played out, it matched the overwhelmment that she was feeling. Then later, flying high is inspired to another person. And as that is playing out, it's clear she was high flying when that person came to her. And it's clear that she was low flying when that person came to her. But she didn't really know that until it played out.
Isn't it all right for it to play out? Isn't this what you're wanting to learn? Don't you want to learn what your vibrations feel like? Don't you want to know what this emotion means and what this emotion means? Don't you want to know what a high flying emotion with lots of momentum will yield as opposed to a high flying emotion with not too much momentum? Don't you like knowing how these universal physics and it is physics. There's not a shred of evidence to the opposite of any of this anywhere in the universe. Don't you like knowing in other words, momentum is momentum. Inertia is inertia. These are provable, factual physics that you understand in so many ways. And once you put the vibrational component into the mix and you understand that your emotions are the way that you know what you've got going on, then never is there a mystery about anything that you see happening to anyone, to a mass consciousness, to a group, to a person or to yourself. Nothing is ever unknowable again. Don't you like that? Yeah, and I love, there was a recording that I was listening to where you were talking, uh, Abraham was saying something about that you can control every reaction, you can control by the way you feel your vibrational match, and it felt so invigorating to really grasp that into a palpable knowing of... of Two things happen, when you're in the receiving mode, you don't rendezvous with things that you need to fix, and when you are near the receiving mode then you're rendezvousing with things that you need to fix but you're close enough that you know how to get back into alignment so you know what to do in other words finding your way you're molding the clay if this was the first sculpture that you'd ever make it would probably be quite a big mess you never see someone get a big clump of clay and just throw it down and then go oh that didn't turn out good it takes some time for you to mold it into something that matches what you have going on in your mind. We just want you to be aware of what you've got going in your mind. We want you to be thrilled when the idea comes to recognize the desire. We've started every seminar for many, many years by saying, are you knowing what you are wanting? Because when the desire has come to you, it's so far along the continuum of the thought turning to the thing. By the time you've received it, where you know that you've got a desire, you've come really far in the continuum of playing it out all the way. By the time you recognize that you would like something or that you want something, ooh, there's already such good momentum. Life gave it to you. You launch those rockets and the vortex is going. There's already enough momentum that you got the idea. Now just don't kill it. Let its natural momentum. You are not the engine that makes it go. Just don't be the brakes that don't let it go. The natural momentum will carry it. The natural momentum will carry it. It's like the cork. Hold it under the water. That's what negative emotion is. Let it go. It will naturally rise back to the surface. There is a natural momentum that is moving toward all things that you desire. And I got this vision in my dream. It was really fun. Jerry throwing a boomerang. And that, that's kind of like our vibration. And it was actually really fun. But it was... You know what you put out you get back but it doesn't happen it's like you don't throw it and it's it's there it, you throw it out and it comes back it takes a little while so that was really fun to get that in my dream because it yeah. felt so good it yeah. felt so good and then the only other thing i want to say is the impulse when we're in the receptive mode and we get that impulse and sometimes it's funny because i have been getting this nudge to do something and i've been not doing it <laughs> well, isn't that interesting yes isn't that interesting when you deny your own yeah. natural momentum yeah. and can't you feel the offness mm -hmm. of that yeah. yes and there's and, more and so that's been really fun for me to unfold and just kind of be curious and then but feeling really good when the impulse comes and wanting to take action and then i throw resistance on my trail and i viscerally know that i'm doing it and then i say okay just get off the subject get in the receptive mode and then it comes back to me and it feels so good when it does it feels so good just for a while we never offer homework but here's some homework <laughs> just for a little while let the idea that's in your mind when you leave here today be thoughts turning to things just that simple concept and then just accept that you're a thinker and that the things you think are turning to things. And then just for a little while, notice the correlation between the thought and the thing that it turned to. Just show yourself your own power. Not judging you because your inner being doesn't. Don't judge yourself. Don't scowl at yourself or be upset as something unwanted occurs. Just acknowledge it. When you do that, that happens. There are natural consequences to vibration. And the consequences are not punishment. They are natural consequences to vibration. Mm -hmm. So as you acknowledge the consequence, the result, and you acknowledge that it was a result that was pleasing, then take a moment to recall 
the vibration that allowed it to become not the vibration that created it. This is an important distinction, not the vibration that created it, because the creation is a given. It's natural. When you ask, it was put into your vortex and it was a done deal even then. But what thoughts have I been consistently offering that allowed the natural unfolding of this desirable consequence or what thoughts have I been harboring that allowed the unfolding of this unwanted result or consequence. This is how you gain your sense of empowerment. Esther for a while, when something wonderful would happen, say, I did that. And when something not so wonderful would happen, she would say, I did that too. I did that. 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 I'm doing every bit of it. Every bit of it is coming back in response to what I've got going on over which I have control. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Really good. Really good.